YouTube, I'm Charles with Charles Acrylics. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. Please don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell to be notified of newly uploaded videos. Today we're going to be going over how to create depth in your painting by using size and color. For this we're using our primary colors, our red, our blue, and our yellow. And of course we've got our titanium white here on the side and we'll start out here just kind of doing a basic background just so we can have a good foundation of how we're going to show depth here so i'm going to go ahead and fast forward this here for you and then we'll pick it back up we're painting on acrylic paper today and normally I would just sew my paper, but this time I chose not to since this is just a demonstration. Uh, you can see the effects I'm not just sewing. You see here in the sky how it kind of soaked into the paper a little bit. You can see these white uh, splotches here and here. So this could happen to you if you choose not to just sew your paper. Always keep in mind where your light's coming from. On mine, it's going to be from left to right. So the lighter portion of the sky would be here. The darker portion of the sky will be here. For our grass hills here we want to start with our cooler colors towards the back and then bring our warmer colors towards the front. Um, as you do this um, it will give you a little more depth to your painting so um, this is also known as atmospheric perspective so the further back you go into a painting colors start to drop out so in the foreground you're going to have all three primary colors at your disposal your red blues and your yellows as you go back to your mid ground your yellow drops out and then you start going back a little further um, and then you start to have your red drop out and by the time you're all the way back into the background then you have basically just your blue and having these three colors in unison working like that uh, going further back it will allow depth to be shown into your painting so to demonstrate this, we're going to be painting some bushes here, starting with larger bushes towards the front and smaller bushes towards the back. Uh, this is a very common technique or practice, basically kind of finding your focal point of where you want and then working it all the way out to the closer part of the painting, so almost like a cone shape. So you see I've got these paint brushes here and it's kind of giving you, giving you the idea of how everything's going to be laid out. So we'll have our smaller, brush, our smaller bushes in the back and our larger bushes towards the front. You know, we might even just paint um, two lines here just to kind of represent that and kind of give us an idea. And we can start with our bush. And remember the bush closest to us, the bush in the foreground, is going to be our largest bush. And then we'll put a couple more bushes as we go further back and making them smaller and smaller as they go. And as they go back, your color selection should change with your atmospheric perspective. So the bush up front will have all three primary colors. Your next bush moving back will have less yellow. Your next bush moving back will have a little bit less red. To where you get to your last bush will be primarily just blue with a hint of red. We're now going to start on the highlights for our bushes. And we'll start with the bush that is closest to us. Uh, remember that this is the one that's going to be the most detailed, so you can use all of your primary colors mixed together. Um, I'm going to warmer and warmer colors into our highlights. And then as we work back on our other bushes, it's going to be the same concept with our highlights, but we're just going to drop out the yellow in our highlights when we move back to the next bush. And in the bush after that, we'll drop out our reds. And the bush after that will be just primarily blue with a little touch of red to maybe even no highlight at all because it's so far in the distance. To make our brush bushes look a little more realistic, we'll add some shadows. Uh, keep in mind the lines that we did to make our bushes we're using sides. Think of that with your shadows also. Your shadow closest to you is going to be the longest. And then shorter and shorter shadows as you go back to maybe even no shadow on the last one. So mix up your... Uh, colors for your shadows and start adding that and keeping with the atmospheric perspective first having all three primary colors in your first shadow and dropping out your yellows and then your reds and basically your blues we're going to add just 
a few more highlights to our front bushes here before we begin with our mountain range. Now remember this is just a, a demonstration or a study if you will so these um, mountains and bushes and all this stuff isn't perfect or as much time spent on it to get the detail in that you would like. This is primarily just for an example to understand the atmospheric perspective here. Now for mountains, uh, wanting to show distant mountains and mountains that are closer, you'll want to have more bluish mountains towards the background. Um, sticking with that atmospheric perspective, blue towards the back. As you come forward, you gain a little more red, so you'll have more purplish type mountains. And then you get to your foreground mountains where you'll have more of your greens and your browns by adding in the yellow. Well, that pretty much sums up this study for atmospheric perspective by using size and color. So let's sum up what we've learned so far. Um, if you are going to use acrylic paper or uh, any paper to paint on, make sure you gesso it because you can have colors bleed through. You can use size to show depth and also color. Never forget where your light source is coming from so you can apply your shadows. Um, and then when using that, that color, you want to be having your primary colors to the front and then going all the way back to dropping out your yellows and your reds and having just your blues. And that will give you kind of depth as you're moving back as we're seeing here with these bushes. So hopefully this helps you become a better artist, a better painter. And until next time, God bless. Happy painting. Please show your support by liking, subscribing, and hitting the bell. You will be notified of newly uploaded videos.